Hello, this is Dr. Patrick Hu. I'm CEO and President of Moffitt Cancer Center and SITSI President. We're here at the 37th Annual Meeting of SITSI in Boston, Massachusetts. We're very fortunate today to have Dr. Robert Wenham, head of our gynecologic malignancies group at Moffitt Cancer Center. Thank you, Dr. Wenham, for joining us today. Well, thank you, Dr. Hu, for having me here. It's a very exciting meeting. Yeah. Well, you have uh, some exciting posters that you're presenting, and one is on a clinical trial uh, that you started at Moffitt Cancer Center with your collaborators and now is in patients. Can you tell us about that? Absolutely. So one of the things that makes CAR-T in our trial somewhat unique is the specificity of the target. So follicle stimulating hormone receptor is something that's found on gonads, which is ideal if you think about it for a gonadal tumor like ovarian cancer. So you can find it on ovarian cancer tissue, you can find it on normal ovary, you can find it on testis. None of that is really a concern. We've had our first patient dose now with the CAR-T therapy. She's made it through the dose limiting toxicity period and we're looking forward to enrolling some more patients right now in the near future. Well, that's exciting. So you're taking her blood, um, uh, you put the gene in to get it to redirect and recognize the ovarian cancer, then how do you reinfuse the cells? So, so one of the novel things about this study is that we are doing it intraperitoneally, which means we put a catheter into the belly cavity. Now we do have another arm for those patients who are unable to receive it inside the belly, we can infuse this intravenously, which means we're gonna get a couple sets of information here. Do you really need to have intraperitoneal infusion for ovarian cancer? Preclinical data from, from the labs at Moffitt suggested that that might be the better way, but we don't really know that. So we're gonna find out during the study. The other thing that's exciting about this, I will say, is that one of the things that's hindered a lot of CAR-T therapy for ovarian tumors and solid tumors in general is persistence of those cells. And we do at least have preclinical data in mice models showing persistence at least a couple months out of the immune cells. Put this in context. Tell us what else is going on in uh, ovarian cancer research, especially when it relates to immuno-oncology and immunomodulatory agents. Absolutely. So, you know, immune therapy for ovarian cancer has not been the gold mine that has been for other cancers out there. And even notably for our other cancers like endometrial cancer and cervical cancer, immunotherapy has taken a strong hold both in true clinical practice that's approved and also in experimental therapies. We have a, a currently a TIL trial that's open and previous reports by some of my colleagues out there presenting our data have shown response rates anywhere between 44 to 57 percent for TIL therapy with or without immune checkpoint inhibitors. So that's experimental at this point. There are more arms of that study that are going to be coming out, so I'm very excited about the data for that in general, and I'm very excited to put patients on. In ovarian cancer, however, we've seen very poor response rates from a single agent. It's around 10%, which is, which is dismal. There have been some promising reports looking at the combination of metronomic or dose-dense type chemotherapies in combination with checkpoint inhibitors. Some data from a colleague of mine up in New York uh, was published in this regard. We have some data that we generated at Moffitt Cancer Center, and currently there's a large randomized phase three international trial that's being built upon that concept. Well, thanks so much, uh, Dr. Robert Wenham, Head of Gynecologic Malignancies at Moffitt Cancer Center. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Hu.